Today there is a, you know, after we've been saying it's been such a boring off season for LSU football, which is exactly what we want. Finally, an off season with zero drama. And really, there was like zero even going on because for once, LSU were retaining the same coaching staff. LSU weren't, you know, losing a billion transfers. It wasn't a never-ending, you know, scandal with Title IX. It, you know, LSU had kind of settled into a groove here with Brian Kelly where the culture he had started, discipline, increased attention to academics, accountability squads, these SWAT teams, you know, like, it all counts, it all matters. That type of culture has been taking root, and you've seen... The, the positive side of that, the benefits of that. Well, I mean, that's still going to be all positive and all good and all that, and it's going to continue. But it doesn't mean that, you know, overnight, everything is just going to be fixed, right? It doesn't mean that everything overnight is just perfect, right? And I also think that the news that came out today is very... I hate to use this word, or this phrase to go with it because it's kind of, uh, you know, intense, but trigger happy. I think it's a trigger happy story because I think people see, you know, young athlete gun and they, they begin to really start to get, get wild. Um, the news coming out, I believe it was WAFB who, reco- who reported that first, Jacques Doucet. I'm not 100% sure, but from, from, from what I could see, it was WAFB who reported that first, um, that Malik Neighbors was arrested uh, in illegal carrying of a firearm in New Orleans. Okay, now it's very important that you know where he is at, okay? It's very important, the setting. Now, why would the setting be important, okay? He's arrested, okay? Now, what's very interesting is Malik was not even booked. Malik was not even, you know, booked into a prison and put away somewhere. He was arrested, released of his own recognizance three hours later. Very strange. Uh... Or sorry, I should say four hours later, right? Yeah, four hours. I think it was nine. Yeah, nine o'clock. Let me get this straight. Nine o'clock. He was arrested in New Orleans. Nine o'clock Monday night, and then he was released two a.m. So actually, yeah, five hours there. Um, very interesting timeline to me. That probably points to the fact that it's most likely not Malik being, you know, the one with the gun on him, but he could be in the car with someone else who has an illegal firearm, thus making him, you know, part of it by guilt by association, technically. And then all of the hours of waiting for why he's booked, potentially interrogation, potentially talking with the police to dispel anything, but here's the thing. This is not a big deal to me. Okay. I understand some of this is a firearm, this is a gun. I understand. I understand. We don't want people running around thinking they can just uh, be shooting people. We don't want people thinking, you know, guns are the answer to every every situation, every argument. But let's get real here. Where this is why I was saying, what's the setting? What is the setting? The setting is very important here. Where was Malik arrested? New Orleans. At night. I'm just going to tell you right now. You're someone like Malik Neighbors. The profile of Malik Neighbors. A local talent like Malik Neighbors. It's a different thing. Being in New Orleans. In certain parts of New Orleans. Certain parts of Louisiana. To, to put it 
in a, symbolically and literally, there can be a target on your back for simply being who you are. That is no joke. That is no exaggeration. We've seen athletes lose their lives over this type of stuff. I'm not trying to justify or trying to stick up for Malik being in illegal possession of a firearm. But there are reasons people do things. And obviously, if Malik was the one with the weapon on himself, it was because of some type of fear, some type of worry about, concern about his safety. And maybe what's best for Malik right here is just, he's got to, you know, Stop going to New Orleans. Keep it, keep it in BR. Keep it in Lafayette. Going home, and uh, you know, stop going out so much. Stop, stop putting yourself in those situations. Don't put the target. Don't, don't put yourself out there to have the target on your back. Is what I would say. But right now, it's really too early to know exactly what's gone on here. And so I'm going to not speculate or really, you know, go diving into things. I've spoken to Malik and his mother. I haven't gotten a response back from Malik yet. Um, obviously understandable. Um, but, you know, we if you really want to know the soul of Malik, you know, read the interview we did with him. We did an interview with him and his mother... Jack Besh also participated in that article. It was about Malik and Jack's friendship and how it would kind of transcend certain, you know, barriers, limits that were put in the way of their relationship and maybe potentially playing football together at LSU, even playing at LSU, either one of them. And they were able to overcome that. And I feel like you know, I had one view of Malik Neighbors before I wrote that article. And then in the process of writing that article, I had a completely new appreciation for who Malik was. There's a lot that he sent to me that was not included in the article that said a lot about him and who the type of person he is. I really wish I would have put it in. The article was already getting pretty long, and there's just tons of extra interview bits that really, you know, out of context, probably don't really make sense to release, but really, in my opinion, show Malik in a great light. Um, I don't want you to see this headline, Malik Neighbors, Weapon, Gun, and get this, like, oh, crap thinking he's gonna be a thug he's gonna be a this oh no where's he doing it oh no he's gonna he's doing this he's gonna be the, like all these cliches all these um you know we we've had these examples in the history of athletes going rogue in a way like this you know they get big they get guns people talk trash you don't want to be disrespected you shut that shit down, you know, you get angry, you get crazy, stuff goes down. Instead of punching, instead of fighting, you're shooting because you're the top dog. You don't have to wait for nobody, you know, that type of stuff. I don't see it going the Ray Carruth direction, you know. I see Malik, this being a, a, a blip here. This is Malik being caught in a situation where I think, as you will see, when all the facts are made clear, facts come to light, I think you'll see that it is a situation that is extremely black and white here. And I think, yes, Malik is in the wrong, um, caught with doing something illegal. But in the context, in the situation, in the setting, young kid making a mistake... You can understand why this happened and, and what really it all means. And it doesn't really mean much, although we just want to see Malik 
be okay, be out of the legal system in any way, shape, or form, and um, move on with his life from this, you know, that's really what we want to see.